Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Keeping Goals. We're back again with another match day vlog. We are playing at home against our local derby rivals underneath the sun at midnight. Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Keeping Goals. If you're new here, my name's Conor O'Keefe. I'm a goalkeeper playing in Sweden and Keeping Goals is a vlog series here on YouTube that documents my journey throughout football. We're back again with another match day vlog, but again, like last week, a match day vlog with a little bit of a twist because my team, PTA IF, we are playing at home against our local derby rivals, IFK Lulia. But that's not all. To celebrate the summer solstice and the Swedish Midsummer Festival, we will be playing our match underneath the sun at midnight. So if that sounds pretty interesting, make sure you stick around, watch the full video. I'll show you how the game goes, bring you along for the full prep, take you behind the scenes. And if you do enjoy it, hit that little like button underneath. It helps us out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't already, click subscribe, help us on our way to 50,000 subscribers and come and join the Keeping Goals Union. Now I know what you guys must be thinking, how can you play football in the sun at midnight? And you're right, it's pretty strange, it's pretty weird, but hear me out. Petia, the club that I play for, and Lulia, we both play in the Etan Nora, which is the third tier of Swedish football. As well as being local derby rivals, geographically, we are the two most northern teams in the league, as you can see from the map. And right now, in the middle of June, just past the longest day of the year, the sun barely sets here in the north of Sweden. In fact, as you might be able to see, sunset tonight is at 10 to midnight, and sunrise is at 20 past one, which is absolutely crazy. The Midsummer Festival is pretty big here in Sweden, so to celebrate, the league thought that they would schedule this Norbottom derby at 10 p.m. kickoff today. So all in one game, you've got a derby, a festival, the crowds allowed back in, no European games this evening, so a lot of people are going to be watching. And add into all of that, the league table, which you can see, Petia and Lulia, we both have the same amount of points. So it's going to be a huge game and one that I am really looking forward to playing in. We've actually played Lulia three times already this season, but it was all in pre-season. Some of you guys might remember it, it was on the vlog, but we haven't yet played them in the league. So it's going to be a really, really interesting game. I'm not sure that I've ever had a 10 p.m. kickoff before. So that's been a little bit weird trying to get used to. Throughout this week, I've tried to make sure that I shift my body clock a little bit later. At 10 p.m. I've been going for walks, doing like activation stuff, making sure that my body gets ready to perform at that time of the day. And for today itself, it's been pretty chilled. I've not done too much. Had my lunch at a normal time, had an hour long nap after lunch. It's now about quarter past five. So I'm gonna think about getting some food ready for six, about four hours before kickoff. Chill with Frankie, get all my kit together. And yeah, get ready for the game. So half six, got a little bit of pasta with peas, ham and pesto. Franks is on the lasagna. Mm. So how are you feeling about the game, Franks? Question number one, will you be awake when we kick off at 10pm? Well, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> and that's the thing I'm most nervous about. But it'll be very fun to play, obviously, a derby, but in front of the crowd, at such a weird kickoff time, under the sun, mm. it's a very unique experience, so it should be quite fun. So we're gonna eat tea now. It's still three and a half hours till kickoff. It feels like this day is really, really dragging but we'll chill for a little bit, get everything ready, and then head off to the ground. But yeah, it's gonna be a good one. So there we go. We're finally on the way to the game. 8 p.m., walking up a little bit early because I couldn't be bothered waiting any longer, to be honest. Excited for it, gonna be a really, really good one. Looking forward to playing, looking forward to the occasion, looking forward to the competition. Again, like last week, when everything's been built up, when everything's high intensity, high pressure, can you keep your head? Can you stay calm? Can you focus on what you have to do? Complete your job, help the team as best as possible and contribute to a good performance. That's the aim, that's the focus. The ground is just behind me. I'm gonna go in, get changed, get ready to go. I'll bring you the highlights now, show you how we get on. But wish us luck, I will speak to you afterwards. Let's go smash it. Woo! 
Joel Bäckström blåser igång. Pitio mot IFK Lulu. 22-0-0. Två när han avgjorde det. Det hade man gärna haft i den minuten. Men lyckades ändå vänta. Här kommer ett långt till spel och vi har första riktiga möjligheten för Assam. Och han vill ju vid... Högt upp ligger man och här får Winnie Peter tillbaka bollen och vi har ett gyllene läge för Maddo Matare. Bra, det är tio minuter. Här kommer kanske en möjlighet då för Luleå. Det är Oskarsson med framtid. Att det blir ett sjätte. Wow, my god! Det är ju Sundqvist något som gör att Assam får ta på den här bollen och kan utmana ju Sundqvist. Han vinner också första duellen. Skottet går ett äck. Pettersen plockar ner den och rullar bollen mot det öppna målet. Men Conor O'Keefe gör som han gjorde i stort sett hela fjol och nekar motståndarna. Pettersen i det här fallet och gör en mål. Det där är en väldigt fin boll. Öppnar med sådan. Och frågan är... Oj då, nej men vad händer här? Oskarsson får ett jätteläge till skängs ifrån James Bergen. Han når också Larsson! Han är där! Och det är så otroligt nära att vilja ha med situationen när han grundlurar varenda en i första läget. Och sen vinner duellen mot Mugado i nästa läge. Och hoppas på att Stomaja kan inte ta med i alla fall grundlurat mig. Och Marcus Fager Hellström, han gör det igen, kommer in och ligger bakom mål för Pitio. Och han jobbar till sig bollen igen. Vilken injektion han är på hemmalaget. Ska det komma ännu mer här nu? Pitio som alltså var utspelad i den första halvleken. Och här är eh, Pashanga Bulla i valven. Och nu börjar det hända grejer i Pitio. Det är Johansson. Ska in där bollen och... Vem har vi där då? Marcus Fagen Hellström är det där. Det där är en jättefin passning till Johansson som är fri från kanten och ligger in 2-0 till Pizio. Han kliver fram! Fredrik Johansson! Abdullah brukar vara den som gör en mål. Den här gången så är det Abdullah som serverar Johansson. Som rullar i den där bollen. Folken Hellström är där med. Han som kommer upp i. Nej, det snarare för Ola Olsson. Och så är det Pashang Abdullah. Flaggan är nere. Han är målskytt på nytt. Och det är efter att folk i Hellström har bytt in som allting händer framåt. Och det är någon ting. Ja, det är väl det som att han ska komma in. Och så är det för matchen. Så vinner med tre mål i mot noll. Marcus Fagel Hellström och Pashang Abdullah och Fredrik Johansson. Där har ni målskyttarna.
don't yeah, don't go. jump. Don't. <laughs> no. What a win. What a win. Right. We actually have to be a bit quiet because yeah. it's quarter to one. But look how light it is. Crazy. Clean sheet, three points, Derby win. What a day. I'm in no fit state to give an analysis on the game because I'm a little bit giddy. <laughs> so, <laughs> we need to go and have a cup of tea and calm down. And I will speak to you guys tomorrow. What a win. Big, big performance, even bigger result, Derby Day, a win is all that matters. Made up with that one. An intense game, a tight game, but a very enjoyable game to be a part of. Those are the games that I love the most as a player. A little bit of atmosphere, a little bit of tension, a close game with fine margins, but one where you ultimately come out on top, of course. First of all, very, very cool to be playing a match close to midnight while it's still sunny. I know the floodlights were on, but as you can see, it was still pretty light outside. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that because that's something pretty rare. It was a little bit weird throughout the day in preparation before the game, trying to stay calm, not trying to get worked up too soon in the day, making sure that I ate at the right times, that I had a nap, that I was prepared fully. But as soon as I was out for the warm up, you forget all about it. You didn't realize what time it was. It just felt like a normal match day. And the game itself, like I said, was pretty tight especially in the first half they definitely had the majority of the possession majority of the chances in the first half but I was very pleased that I could step up and contribute to making sure that we still had a clean sheet at half time to then allow the rest of the team to push on and to get the win later in the game from a personal point of view the kind of three main actions probably the save down to my right hand side wasn't too far in the corner it was about making sure that my body position my set position was correct I had good footwork watched it all the way could read his body language and make the save. The second one, the 1v1, when the back pass was a little bit too short, you're preparing for the first situation, which is to deal with the back pass, and then when it doesn't go the way that you expect it to, you have to shift and change. And it suddenly became a 1v1, so it was about adapting from receiving a back pass body position to engaging with a 1v1, waiting, and then hitting the spread position to make the save. And then finally, with the header from the free kick, something that I may have spoke about before, but when you're watching the delivery of a cross and you know that it's not one that you're gonna come and take, I then tend to shift my gaze away from the flight of the ball onto the attacker so that I can judge his body shape, his body position, the angle of the header, and I can read as many cues as possible to interpret where the ball's gonna go. Instead of watching the ball and then trying to react to all that information at the point of contact, getting the picture beforehand, and as the ball comes into view, then making your decision. And I was able to make that save down to my left-hand side, trap it on the line, and make sure it wasn't a goal. But then in the second half, I had very little to do. The team did a great job in stepping up the performance level. Mackie made a big difference when he came on up front and obviously got that first goal, brilliant finish. And then to see Freddie and Pash score towards the end was brilliant, to see all three of our forwards getting goals. So a huge win in the derby, under the midnight sun, doesn't get much better than that. And as you can see, it makes a significant difference to the table. We've now moved up to 10th. We've stretched ahead of Lulia, three points ahead of them with two games in hand. So that was a big, big result. Two wins in a row from two very important games. We have three games to go before the summer break. So it's about keeping that momentum going, picking up more wins. Starting with our next game, which is against Hudig's Val, another big game with a team close to us in the league, which is also the first of our two games in hand. So another important game. This week's Patron of the Week is Stephen Brown. Stephen, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for supporting the channel. We wouldn't be able to make the vlog without patrons. So as a thank you, here's your Keeping Goal shout out. If you guys would like to win Patron of the Week, like Stephen, and receive loads of other benefits exclusive to patrons, you can sign up using the link below this video. But that's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I only ask for one thing, that little like button underneath the video, please give it a click. Helps us out with the YouTube algorithm, helps us to reach as many people as possible, which would be brilliant about now because we are very, very close to 50,000 subscribers, which is absolutely mad. So if you haven't already, click subscribe and come and join the Keeping Goals Union. Thank you for watching guys, hope you have a great week, look after yourselves, keep chasing improvement as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, speak to you in a bit. I'm put Chandler on the first of all, and it was actually better. No. No, I know what, well, I'm usually on your side, but it genuinely was actually better. I'm not having that.